All right, here's the second part of the lesson for section 1.5, solving quadratics in the grade 11 functions course. This is part two, um, where I'm going to teach you how to solve quadratics using the quadratic formula. Um, you have learned this in grade 10, but however, in grade 11, um, whenever you express a final answer, it needs to be an exact answer, meaning it'll contain radical expressions. You're not going to uh, give an approximate answer where you evaluate the radical and give a decimal that has to be rounded. So this here is slightly different. Um, <clears throat> if you go to JensenMath.ca and go through the entire lesson that, um, that I've done there, uh, you'll go through each of these parts. But for this video lesson, I'm just going to focus on the part that's going to be different this year compared to grade 10, um, which is part 3 right here. So I'm going to focus on that. Let's find the solutions of a quadratic with two roots. Um, the only part that's going to be different, like I said before, is we're going to give exact answers, not approximate answers. Um, before we do that, I guess just a quick reminder about the different possibilities um, for answers when you're trying to solve a quadratic using the quadratic formula. Um, do all quadratics have two x-intercepts? Hopefully you remember. No, they don't. Um, it could have no x-intercepts, it could have one x-intercept, or it could have two x-intercepts. The way to determine how many x-intercepts it's going to have if you don't want to go ahead and solve the entire quadratic is just by looking at the discriminant in the quadratic formula, the b squared minus 4ac part. That's the part that's under the square root sign. We call that the discriminant. If we look at that, we can tell how many solutions there are going to be. If the discriminant of the quadratic formula is greater than zero, meaning a positive number, we're going to have to, in the quadratic formula, sorry, I should remind you, um, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all of this over 2a. <coughs> So if under the square root, the b squared minus 4 is a positive number, we're going to be adding that positive number and subtracting that positive number, giving us two different answers, giving us two different x-intercepts. The quadrat could look like this. It crosses the x-axis twice. However, if under the square root is equal to 0, we're going to be adding 0 and subtracting 0, which is essentially the exact same answer, which is why you would only get one solution if the discriminant is equal to 0. If you get one solution, that means that the vertex is actually on the x-axis meaning the quadratic will just touch the x-axis and then go back up. Or if it's opening down, it could just touch the x-axis and then go back down. The vertex, when there is one solution, the vertex is on the x-axis. If under the square root sign we have a negative number, well, we can't take the square root of a negative number, so there are zero solutions, meaning the quadratic opens up and the vertex is above the x-axis or it opens down and the vertex is below the x-axis. Those are two different scenarios that can happen. So, like I said, we're just going to focus on this section, solving a quadratic with two roots, and we are going to leave our answers as exact answers, so including radicals or fractions. Do not um, evaluate and round a decimal to get your answer. Okay, it has to be exact. So, let's practice. We're going to do two examples, nice and quick. So, like I said before, um, hopefully you remember the quadratic formula. I'll just rewrite it up here just quickly. Um, negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And hopefully you remember that this quadratic is in standard form. It has to, In order to solve using quadratic form, it has to be in standard form set to 0. So it has to be in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And then you just plug in your a, b, and c values into the quadratic formula. So, so far this isn't different than what you would have done last year. So x is equal to negative b, so negative negative 10, which is just 10, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 10 squared, minus 4 times the a value, which is 3, times c, which is 5, all over, I can do that a bit better, I think, all over to a. Now we're going to simplify whatever we can. So 10 plus or minus. I'm going to simplify the whole radicand at once. And by radicand, I mean the number under the square root. So I'm going to evaluate the b squared minus 4ac. Negative 10 squared is 100. So I have to do 100 minus 4 times 3 times 5. 4 times 3 times 5. Well, 4 times 5 is 20 times 3 is 60. So I have to do 100 minus 60, which is 40. So I have a positive number under the square root sign. So I'm going to get two answers when I solve this quadratic. And don't forget, it is over 6. Now, 
If you're in grade 10, you then just punch this into your calculator. You do 10 plus root 40 over 6 and 10 minus root 40 over 6. Get two approximate answers as decimals and you can round your answers. That's not what you're going to do this year. What you're going to do now is you're going to remember your rules when working with radicals and you're going to rewrite root 40 as a mixed radical. So you're going to find a perfect square number that divides evenly into 40. And a perfect square number that is a factor of 40 is 4. So I can break up root 40 into root 4 times root 10, and hopefully remember the square root of 4 is 2, so I can rewrite this just as 2 root 10. Now if you got lost when I did that there, go back and watch the lesson on 1.4, um, simplifying radical expressions. Now there's another step we can do here. In our numerator, we can common factor out a 2, and then we'll be able to simplify further. So I have two terms here, a 10 and a 2 root 10. Um, I can common factor out a 2 and then divide in brackets both of these terms by the 2 I took out. I will get 5 plus or minus 1 root 10, or I'll just write it as root 10 over 6. Now I can simplify 2 over 6. 2 over 6 simplifies to 1 over 3. So my final answer now, x equals 1 times 5 plus or minus root 10. I can just write that as 5 plus or minus root 10 over 3. There's my final answer. If you want, you can break it up into x equals 5 plus root 10 over 3 and 5 minus root 10 over 3, but these are my two answers, 5 plus or minus root 10 over 3 that can't be simplified any further. So my x-intercepts are at 5 plus root 10 over, over 3 comma 0 and 5 minus root 10 over 3 comma 0. Those are my x-intercepts. Okay, so that's as much as I can simplify it. Let's do another example. Once again, I'm going to use the quadratic formula by plugging in my a, my b, my c into negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, and I get negative 8 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 8 squared minus 4 times the a value times the c value all over 2 times the a value. Now we'll simplify negative 8 plus or minus. I'm going to simplify the whole radicand, so 64, and then I have <clears throat> minus 4 times negative 2 times negative 5. Negative 2 times negative 5 is 10, times 4 is 40, so I have 64 minus 40, which is equal to 24, all over negative 4. Now the, this is going to be similar to the last one, but the denominator has a negative number, so this is going to be a bit different. I'm going to be able to simplify that. Um, once again, don't evaluate this and get a decimal and um, round it. We're going to give an exact answer by simplifying our radical, so find a perfect square number that goes into 24. Um, a perfect square number that goes into 24 is 4. It goes in 6 times, so I can break it up into root 4 times root 6, but the square root of 4 is 2, so I'm going to rewrite that just as 2 root 6, plus or minus 2 root 6, all over negative 4. Now the next step is where it's going to be a little bit tricky. Um, I'm going to common factor out a negative number so that when I simplify my denominator becomes negative, I mean my denominator will become positive. <clears throat> so I have an 8 and a 2, I can take out a 2 from those two things. I can common factor out 2, but I'm going to common factor out a negative 2, and then divide both of these terms, divide the negative 8 by negative 2 and get 4, and divide the plus or minus 2 root 6 by negative 2. So what's going to happen is the plus root 2, the, the plus 2 root 6 <clears throat> divided by negative 2 is going to change to a minus root 6, and the minus 2 root 6 is going to change to a plus root 6. So all that happened here was the plus, since I'm dividing by a negative, it's going to make the plus a minus, and it's going to make the minus a plus. So just switch that plus and the minus when you take out a negative as a common factor, and I divided the 2, cancelled out the 2, and what I'm left with here, I have a negative 2 over negative 4, which I can simplify, negative divided by negative is positive, and 2 over 4 is 1 over 2. And my last step, I get x equals 
4 minus or plus root 6 over 2. And if you want, like I said before, you can break it up into your two possible answers. x equals 4 minus root 6 over 2 and x equals 4 plus root 6 over 2. And those are your two x-intercepts. <clears throat> And I think that's it for this lesson. Um, just make sure when you take out a negative as a common factor, you flip the plus and minus to a minus and plus. And make sure you don't make the mistake of thinking, a lot of people will think, oh, I have a 4 divided by a 2. I'm going to cancel those two out. But because in the numerator it is not factored, we can't do that. It's a 4 minus root 6 over 2, so we can't cancel. If it was 4 times root 6 over 2, then I would be able to. But because there's this minus sign here, I can't cancel out. You can only cancel out things that are being multiplied by everything else on the top. Like this 2 was being multiplied by this whole thing, so that's why I could cancel there. Okay, um, and that's it. Uh, go to gentlemath.ca, um, download the worksheet, try it out.